But you're right though, and honestly, I don't think it will happen. And honestly, I don't even, I don't even trip about it no more. I just let people do the talking. Y'all see, I didn't get hop in none of them conversations for real because it was, it is what it is. I said I'm gonna just wait to my podcast and bring it to my podcast and talk about it on my platform. I ain't even gonna pay no attention to it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not getting in the note. I can't do it. With Yo, 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 it's the Mally Bros Podcast, episode 189. I don't give a fuck what you he's saying. You sound like you was just starting the engine up. I don't care something. what he's saying. I don't care. Because when you start... You want to redo it? No, when you start, I'll let you rock. Episode 189. Happy Tuesday to everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out to... I forget who it was. Somebody sent me and said, man, I missed the Fridays. I don't know if it's because... Uh, it's, it's my guy from Brazil. I forget, I forget his name. But he was like, I don't know if it's because of my... Schedule or damn yeah, Tuesday is a big but, change for for a lot of people. Yeah, you, people got yeah. into that rhythm. But um, but happy happy Tuesday. Hope everybody had a, a festive um Valentine's Day and slash weekend. Mm-hmm. You feel? Oh shoot! You know what? Let me close this window real quick, Trey. Go ahead and say uh, keep going. Nah, yeah. Um, I hope everybody had a festive uh, weekend, celebrating V Day. I'm gonna tell you, I went to Target the day after. No, I went to Target the day of Valentine's uh, Day, and it was nothing left. Yeah, nothing in there. Nothing in there. It was all you know. You know what they were set up for? Easter. It was Easter basket shit everywhere. Oh yeah, they ready for the next. They they get them in and get them out. And they were saying, uh, I've also seen Valentine's Day shit since New Year's. That's no lie. I've seen Valentine's 100%. Day shit in there since New Year's. And you know what? They were sending like uh, balloons and like. Chocolate covered strawberries and stuff like that way early. Yeah. And I'm like, y'all gonna keep these joints? How y'all gonna keep this away from... I was thinking about that. Some of that chocolate sat, sat on shelves for me. Did you eat them chocolate strawberries I gave you? Fuck them joints up. You did? Fuck them up. I felt like a kid eating them joints. You know what's a little bit overrated? An what? edible arrangement. Nah. It looks great. Them joints is fire. Now think about it. It looks great. They but said our pockets never... don't look overrated, nigga. They hear you? We just make money, so <laughs> talk nice about us. <laughs> this is my only reason why I say that. I say that because they look great, but I have never seen somebody finish one. You throwing most of that fruit in the trash. Y'all don't want all that honeydew melon. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like the... I haven't... I'm, I guess I haven't seen anybody finish one, but like I've also haven't... Getting the chocolate other? strawberry joints from there. Cool. But get in the flower arrangement, unless they got a family. Nah, no bullshit. You get your girl a, a ton of fruit like that. And where you got to put that joint, you better uh-huh. hope she got a fridge. Because if you give me one, you should break be date- it down. You shouldn't be dating or talking to nobody that don't got a fridge. We're going to talk about that, though. I'm glad you said Should name. we talk about? I'm glad you said this. <laughs> How was your V-Day? You was out of town. Yep. Uh, Valentine's Day in Seattle was dope. We was working, though. Uh, A-Train in the building. Y'all can't see her, but uh, she was a workaholic. For Valentine's Day, and we knew that that we've known that since last year, cause she had some stuff in the works. Uh, she walked in a fashion show. You got to be the proud significant other on the side. Like I got to be the proud SL, but I was there for the behind the scenes of the whole thing. Like it was such a dope shoot, and like it's supposed to be on your Adam Levine. She had a photo shoot the next couple of days, but we went bowling in West Seattle. It was dope. We had such a good time. That was such a dope dope trip. Oh. We went to Portland for the first time. Shout out to everybody in Portland, Oregon. Yeah, how was that? That was dope. I mean, we didn't really get to see anything special in Portland because A Train was shooting, but I was definitely a, a, a real significant other. This, like this that's why I see B-day. Video, Adam Levine. You ever seen the video of Adam Levine? His wife was walking a bit in the uh, Victoria Secret joint. Oh, okay, yeah. He was on the side. That's like a classic moment. Pop, nah, yeah. Pop culture. And we, I, I had the camera with me, so hopefully the footage. Oh please, you know. But I was let's, shooting for, I was shooting for Ada. Let's get to the next. I was shooting for her, shooting for me. Oh yeah, you be yeah. shooting some vlog footage for her. Yeah, because I'm like she so in this st- photo you stacking shoot. up. 
Hey, I'm going to let her, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to let her stuff be her stuff and then my stuff be mine. Just okay. basically had my camera. So look, I could have went and just experienced it or we could get the content. That's mm -hmm. how I look at it. For my V-Day, um, it was chill. Uh, my girl had work or school. And so I just, I did, we did like a, uh, oh no. Her ass was supposed to be gone. I wake up. Her ass is right there. You thought she was supposed to be gone where? She's supposed to be gone from the morning till like three or four. So we were supposed to do our, me and crew, were supposed to do our, uh, our Valentine's Day set up for when set. you get home from work. So she was there and I'm like, you're not leaving. This changes everything. So now I, I had to like, but she ended up uh, taking a nap and me and crew set up some stuff for us. So it was dope. We got our flowers, gifts. I, I put him in a little suit. It was dope. Yeah. Trying to really build it for him. I want him to always go all out. Like, no, yeah. I want him to come to me and be like, what we doing for mom for, for Valentine's Day? I'm already have the plan. But yeah, fellas, now I'll set the uh, stage. Now you, look, now you can go forward in life, though, right? Fellas, mm -hmm. now our year starts, right? Christmas beat our ass, and then we finally got up and dusted ourselves off a little bit. Let uh -huh. me get a uh, whatever. And then right when you got your whatever, here come V-Day. Oh, shit. No bullshit. Think about it. January 15th, between January 15th and the 22nd, you had to start thinking about Bro, my shit is never ending. GG birthday is in March. So I legit have Christmas, February, and then her birthday. Hey, the kids, you know what, let's, we'll get into the shit, but have, did you see what the kids are doing now for, you probably don't really, really have kid TikTok like that, but the way they doing the, remember how we used to pass out the little Valentine's Day cards? Yeah, we you had get the cards that we passed out at the uh, fashion show. You get show. the Spider-Man joints, you get a pack of, how many kids in your class? 25? Get the 30 pack. So that way yeah. you have extra. In case you want to give somebody special too, mm. type shit. These kids now are putting together Valentine's goodie bags for like, 30 motherfuckers. And I mean, like, I, we watched a TikTok the other day. The girl was like, I don't know where we've been, but this is our Valentine. It was a Valentine's Day card, and it came with a little Spider-Man eraser. Okay. She was like, that's, that's this clutch. is what he got, bro. These kids, like the shit, I need y'all to, the shit Oh, changed. that was what they gave versus they, was he, versus they kid came home with like these dope ass goodie bags. They had, somebody had put a pop socket in every bag, a fucking fidget spinner in every bag, hella candy, big snicker. Like, yo, is that what we doing? I was like, yo, is this what I have to look forward to? I got to buy 30 motherfuckers a goodie bag and it's not even a birthday party. Wow. I don't send my kid home with a bunch of that sweet shit. Your kid come home with a king size snicker. What the fuck are you doing? And with think that? about it. I'm thinking, yeah, fuck that. We about to just have all regular shit. G was like, he's always gonna have better than everybody. Cause you know she into the, she wanna put together. Oh, all right, bet yeah. He's always gonna have the best one. I'm like, all right, I know what that means for me. <laughs> That's crazy because I hope it's still about L O V E. You know what I mean? And I hope it's still about. You know, I thought it was dope. The message. Nah, it is. You know, it is. But times changing. Is it, or is it just, okay, we just going to get a bunch of candy and treats and shit, pop sockets and shit? Think about it, T. We weren't really showing love. We didn't give a fuck about them cars. I real. did. I gave a fuck that the Hulk said, you are my crush. <laughs> 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 I gave a fuck that you gave me that shit. <laughs> you are my crush. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But like, Fans, but if like it now, was just Happy Valentine's Day with a Hulk, but you gave me a Snickers bar, what the about fuck it. is this about? The dude, the, card. the dude daughter came home with a goodie bag that she got from her crush. And they were in like fourth grade, but she was like, yeah, such and such got me that. Jacob or whatever his name was. And he was like, look mm. what this little motherfucker got my daughter. He got her the coolest little thing. Like he got her a little keychain with her name on it. They showing a lot more love early. I actually fuck with it. It's just like, damn. The times are changing so fucking much. How what how old would you be cool with your uh daughter having a crush? My daughter having a crush? I mean I under I'm, I mean I don't I'm, know if I'm fucking with the whole I think as men we probably won't, but I just understand that shit will happen. You know what I'm saying? Like shit will Yeah. There's gonna be boys. There's gonna be as long as you doing what you gotta do, 
and set an example and teach her right from wrong, then you straight. We, we might as well get an all-star. That was from the weekend. Dang, that was from the weekend. Yeah, that was probably the biggest part of my weekend. Mm -hmm. Was that yesterday? Only because it was something every... Nah, yeah. Finished with the All-Star well, game last lie. night. V-Day was the biggest part of the weekend. I'm just saying. You nah, know. you said you said it. <laughs> V-Day. But to be to be fair, V-Day was Wednesday-ish. It was like weekend. It was like in, during the week, yeah. The weekend was All-Star weekend. We had the skills challenge. We had the three-point shootout, dunk contest. Mm -hmm. What were some highlights that you uh big highlight for me? Um, Rising Stars Challenge. I felt like they was competitive to a certain extent, mm -hmm. and that's we had a sweet spot in the NBA where every event seemed real competitive. Even the dunk contest was like you could tell they wanted to win, and it wasn't about going out there and having a good time. Fuck that. But um. A highlight for me was the Rising Stars Challenge. I like the skills challenge. I like to see them do different shit. They NBA mm. players. So, like, all right, bet. He shoot from here. He shoot from here. Nah, that yeah, I, I did like that. Uh, Three-point contest, to me, is the most entertaining event of NBA All-Star Weekend. I it is a true is skill that I feel like is the most elite skill in the game. It should be the last event. Dunking is not the most elite skill in the game anymore, I don't yeah. think. I think dunk, the, the dunk contest used to be the most electrifying event. It did. But now, it's not. They need to make the dunk contest second to last. And the, mm -hmm. the three-point shootout should be yeah. last. Because when you think about this, bro, the dunk contest used to be the most electrifying event. Because I think dunking in the NBA, that used to be the most electrifying part of the game. Yeah. If you think about a three-point shootout, they've been able to like elevate the actual three-point contest uh -huh. because... The elevation of the of the three pointer has elevated in the game, like how they're able to say, "All right, bet if you shoot from back here, it's it's worth three points." Yeah, like you used to only be able to get thirty, but now you could get like thirty six if you really knock down everything. So I think because of the way the game went, the three point shootout should definitely be last. And speaking Not of yet. the three point shootout, I thought the Steph Curry versus. Sabrina Ionescu joint was dope. What did you think? What did y'all think? I thought that was, you know. I loved it. I thought it was great. I thought it was great for Sabrina to step up in the in the, the NBA All-Star Weekend when they're in their all season and put on for the, the WNBA. I thought she did a great job, too. She went out there and put up 26. Mm -hmm. I said, Steph. And look, it was looking scary for Steph for a minute. It was. But he's who he is. So, yeah. of course. I think you know. I, he was a couple misses away from making it interesting. I will say, that, that cheap-ass... Belt, come on, y'all. Y'all can do much better than that. That cheap ass looked like a kid made it. Belt. It looked like the old World Wrestling Federation Championship. Remember the old belt? I wonder if the if the WWE has some type of patent out there where they say you can't because I've never seen a belt look as good as their belts. John Cena had the best belt, if you ask me. I that think, motherfucker that spent on the inside. Yeah, that shit was that shit was that shit was fine. Remember a nigga, a nigga at school came to school with it, and you was like, oh, bitch, that nigga got that. <laughs> <laughs> but do you get what I'm saying? Thing. You ever see somebody be like, oh, we got a belt, and it's like, I see what y'all tried to do. The J Black Battle Rap Champion of the Year belt looks better than that belt. Yeah. So, see? oh, I have seen that belt. That's a dope belt. Yeah. I, come on, man. They they could have did better with that. Let's talk about things we didn't No, like. no, wait, but what was we just saying? I wanted to say, say one more thing. When we were though. talking about the three-point contest, Sabrina, you probably wanted to, she... Oh, all I'm going to say about Sabrina is I felt like, shout out to her, like, I tweeted it. Everybody was watching the WNBA for at least, at least 30 seconds, you watch the WNBA, and that is what it's about. All of y'all who say, oh, fuck women hoops, we ain't worried about women hoops, oh, 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 oh so I guess nobody's going to be watching this. Well, guess what you were watching? You watch the WNBA player outscore everybody in the final round of the three-point shoot, shooting contest, basically, nah, from the sure. men's. Because mm -hmm. I think the highest amount was 26, and she got that. Her first go, she went one time. These niggas done went around plenty of times. Y'all forget she set the record last year. And she was shooting from the NBA three-point line. And shot from the NBA three-point. So She's a baller, for sure. She's a baller, for real. I think she represented for the WNBA Shout out to her. One thing that I do want to say that I don't like that I was hearing is you hear people say, oh, Caitlin Clark. Imagine when Caitlin Clark comes out. Let's see if we can get Clay Caitlin Clark here next year. And how about we do Sabrina and Caitlin versus Stefan? How about 
Y'all just actually pay attention to the WNBA All-Star Weekend. How about that? Because that's what I don't like. I don't like, oh, since Caitlin Clark blowing up college hoops, you want to bring her over to the, the men's sports? Nah, it was fuck WNBA, remember? Now Caitlin Clark is setting the league on fire over there, or setting the college hoops on fire. Y'all got plans for her to come to do the shootout in the WNBA. Why not big up the WNBA All-Star game? Why not big that league? That's what I don't like. Because it's like... They have an All-Star weekend too, I'm guessing. They have a, a 100%. That's where Sabrina Ionescu set the record last year. Niggas don't know. She set the three-point shootout record. She has like the most made threes. Period though, right? It's like, Period. But yeah. she sat from the woman is a joint. Okay. But anyway, okay, love okay. the way that that looked for What do you think w? about what Kenny Smith said? She should have shot from the such and such line. Yeah, she and she used a smaller ball. And she... It just wasn't a look good from Kenny Smith. He, I don't think it was a good look. Age. I think it's a, that type of mindset is like, it's the reason why people just don't respect them as hoopers. She went out there and shot from the NBA line and made just as many. It ain't like she was struggling. Like, you remember when Kevin Hart went against Draymond? He actually <laughs> beat him. He only beat him with like 14 points. They act like she went out there and struggled. She went out there and was, and was switching them. So I feel like he was letting his mindset kind of show there talking about oh she should have shot from nah like it didn't need to be made easier for her she competed well just lost it, yeah. it, it to me shows how they look certain men look at them as athletes like you're just a woman playing basketball not an elite woman because y'all got to think about that a lot of people look at the WNBA and just think that it's women who chose to play basketball instead of the most elite women Playing basketball. You know what I mean? Nah, yeah. It ain't just, they look at it like a rec center. Oh, she just play. Nah, she elite. They will cook the fuck out of the most average nigga. Can't keep up with a WNBA player. The nah, average yeah. And people sleep on them coaches. Like people say, I bet this, I, this little, the best AAU boys team can beat the, uh, the, the best they WNBA team. They said the team. best college, they said the best high school basketball, boys, boys basketball team could beat. The best WNBA team. They would get I, out. They would get co- out coached so, so bad, much, so much. They would get out coached so bad. Them big girls, the four and fives, will have them four and five looking rough. They like, oh, so and so, he can, he can do this, he can do that. Dude, have y'all seen the way these niggas games translate? And do y'all know that this is a league? Come on, these girls never stop balling. Anyway, let's stay on topic. NBA All Star Weekend. What did you think about the J Hud halftime show? Jennifer Hudson <laughs> performing at the halftime show was to me. <laughs> I just feel like that was a a big L taken by the NBA. Why the fuck? Like, respect the Jennifer Hudson. She's an EGOT. She has a Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony. Mm-hmm. She's a legend. She should not be at the NBA All-Star Weekend. Uh, yeah, that's performing she- at the halftime show is what I mean. If she's there because she's watching the game, cool. Like, a bunch of the celebrities. I just didn't think... When you think about, and this is nothing against her art work, but when you think about the demographic that watches the NBA, we don't want to see Jennifer Hudson perform. 21 Savage just put out a project. He wasn't available. Killer Mike just won the Grammy. I'm sure he's available. Ain't mm-hmm. like people running down Killer Mike. Um, shit, they could have got either or. I mean, it's in Indiana. There's some Indiana, what's an Indiana artist that's out there? Ooh, Jennifer that. Hudson. Is she from Indiana? Is Jennifer Hudson from Indiana? She up there joint with a football jersey jacket on. Fat ass 17 on the front. What NBA jersey you know look like that, Terrence? They just don't look like that. I just think they should have got something that was a little bit more appealing to the demographic that actually watches the game. It's no shade. This isn't a men-women thing. My girl was with me watching the All-Star Weekend, and guess what? She didn't give a fuck. She yeah. was on her phone the whole time doing her because guess what? Women don't really care about basketball as much as we do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She was like, oh, who's that? Oh, if your mom that's... was at home ironing, she might have said, hold up. Is that J-Hud? <laughs> I know that's what my mom said. Hold up. Right. That's J-Hud. She got that one. <laughs> okay, Ma. Respect to her, but like I thought that was a misstep by the NBA. I thought y'all can do better than that. Come on, y'all. Post Malone 
I mean somebody, somebody else. See if y'all can get that T Swiss. Uh, that T Swizzle. Sorry. No. God damn it, no. Get somebody the men want to see. I would have rather them had motherfucking Coldplay up there or fucking Imagine Dragons. I, it don't matter. Somebody, somebody that will shoot the demographic of Travis people Kelsey up there. Travis Scott just put out an album. Why is Travis Scott not doing the fucking fiend for the uh? Well, you seen they had All Star. The, you seen they had the cheap ass championship belt up come out for Stephen wasn't they? Maybe they money tight. Fuck, we it gotta ain't. pay these motherfuckers. Y'all a bucket billion dollar company. You can afford it. You're right. They could have did better NBA All Star Weekend with the with the halftime show. It's so funny. I thought Jennifer Hudson was about to come out on some just like you know how the BET have. Oh, I said, damn, they doing little performances at the. That's what I thought. Like at the quarter ended, I thought the quarter was over. I said that was ha this is halftime show. Wow. Nah, yeah, not but I'm not hating on her. She is definitely a legend, just a misplaced legend. You know, if they would have even put Stevie Wonder at halftime, it would have been like. They got Stevie? Nah, yeah. We, for this? Stevie need a, yeah, not for this. He has what one of the best about the, uh, ever. What do you think about the All-Star? Let's get to the All-Star game. We got a lot to get to. What do you think about the All-Star game itself? There was a lot of controversy behind I the competitiveness. Love yeah. I watched it. I mean, to I'm, me, it was the same as it was every year, but I'll let you, because you, you know. All I'll say is I love that it was East versus West. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. I hated that team Giannis, team KD, team LeBron. I hated that. I loved East versus West. We grew up on East versus West. I love to see the two conferences go at each other. And I'm sure most of y'all thought that the West was going to win. I know I did. I mm -hmm. said the West is stacked. Did you see that, that video where they were showing everybody, of course, taking the picks? Yeah. It's like, damn, there's no scrub on this squad at all. Yeah. Say the same thing about uh, the East. But I don't know. The West being the West, I love them bringing back East versus West. One thing I don't think they can ever bring back, though, is the competition. I don't think it's ever going to be a competitive thing anymore. Uh, you know, that's the biggest. And that's the that's the big conversation. Like I, The quote that I wanted to give for this is just that fun ruins sports. You know how they say, have fun. You know how people be... Once the game get good, for real, what do your coach say? Hey, let's remember to have fun. Because you get out there and you get intense. And that's low-key the best part about watching sports. If y'all going to have fun, y'all might as well, or like Anthony Edwards said, this shit ain't really about, ain't nobody out here to be competitive. We really just out here for a break. We just out here to have fun. If that's what it is, I'd rather y'all just do like a little scrimmage. We could all tune in or whatever, but like. Nah, yeah. It's the same thing with the NFL with the uh, flag football shit. It's just, I'll watch it, but I would never go to the flag football game. You know what I mean? Nah, yeah. I think All-Star and uh, Pro Bowl as an accolade kind of lost its real appeal. Like when Shannon Sharp said he was a seven-time, an eight-time Pro Bowler. Back in that, back then, it like meant something to go to the Pro Bowl because yeah. it was a big competitive game with the best. Now, it's like a popularity contest, and if you're popular, you can go. Like, a lot of people didn't like the fact that Dame was a star. Did you see that? Yeah. A lot of people didn't like the fact that Dame started. A lot of people felt like he should 100% be there, but he should also 100% not be starting. So, I mean, and it's like winning a... And MVP. And win MVP again. But, you know, people were, saying, people were hating on that. People were like, just because you go out there and you try fucking the hardest... See, but that ...doesn't mean that you also should have been a starter, because people are like... I Him winning MVP is going to make it look like he should have been a starter, but people feel like other people earn the starting position over him. Yeah, I agree with that. Him going out and cooking, though, him going out and actually putting on a show, even Carl Anthony Towns, shout out to him because nigga had 50 points. Actually go out there and try. I would love to see the all-star stat sheet. Uh -huh. Say like 50, 30, 40. You know what I mean? Like they should be out there cooking like how we would imagine on man, we used to we used to real hoop fans that played video games. We used to grow up and put fellas, y'all ever put the quarters on like eight minutes and I got the Eastern stars or the Western stars, and you just trying to play the game with all of the greatest players on the court. Mm -hmm. And you might be like, damn, I got. 40 with Kobe, 30 with Braun. You want to watch and see that. Like, 
Kobe was on, I think, Matt Barnes' podcast, or he was either on a, I'm not saying Matt Barnes, but All The Smoke podcast. It's either that interview or the Knuckleheads interview. That clip was resurfacing where he was talking about uh, the All-Star game mm -hmm. and how dudes don't really want to compete anymore like they used to. And I don't think that that makes it harder to watch. It's just less exciting. And it's like, all right, I don't care if I really miss it this year. I'll always give a fuck if I miss the Super Bowl because it's always going to be playing for the biggest thing or the finals. You know, I'm not missing that. But the All-Star game used to be, yo, I can't miss that. But this nah, every, yeah, the last was, couple years is kind of like... It really wasn't promoted well either. You don't think so? No. I mean, they did. They it's did. a lot of people that didn't even know what was happening. Like, oh, shit. Even me was like, oh, shit, it's All-Star weekend. It's revving out the loop. It's revving out the loop. I knew it was All Star Weekend coming up because we ain't got no damn All Stars, no All Stars in a, in the for for us. I think that's fucked up. I think every every team should have their best player represented. Maybe send, maybe we could have sent Kuz or somebody, but we only won four four or five games, bruh. We got nothing All Star going yeah, on. Yeah, maybe y'all shouldn't. Oh, have but Bilal uh, Kulavali played in the Rising Stars. That was big for us because that's our future, Wizards. That is our future. He played with Wimby. Is he going to be another Berton? He Just know he's a beast on defense. And he's an he all-around great player. You'll see. We, we low-key have baby Giannis, baby... We, we got a nigga that's a baller. Wait. I'm tired of this from Terrence. He played with Wimby. He told me Hachimura was about to be the next Braun. I never told you Hachimura you was going to be Braun. He was about I said to be... he was going to be good. Too much sports. Normally we save sports for the end. Let's go. Oh, but we do want to talk about something that was pertaining to the NBA weekend. No, nah, yeah. My guy Chris Brown uh, trained it for the, this past weekend just because he was supposed to do the, uh, the celebrity game, which was actually good. I, did you watch the celebrity game? I watched the celebrity game this year because it was Stephen A versus uh, Shannon Sharp. Okay, yeah. Kostanet was there. Oh, yeah. Was, Michael Parsons was cooking Michael like Parsons shit. was balling. Yeah. Uh, but the celebrity game was dope, but Chris Brown was supposed to get a, uh, or he did get invited, and then they had pulled it back and said that one of their sponsors didn't like his past or something like that. And it just started this big troubled, you know, conversation about Chris Brown's past and how people hold him to that incident that happened. And people like to bring up a bunch of different stuff about that. And I'll say this, I'm the resident Chris Brown guy. I, I have this conversation all the time. And I always tell people, I will never be the guy that is going to tell you that you're wrong for not liking Chris Brown because of what happened with Rihanna or some of his allegations. Yeah. I would just tell you to not stop at allegations and really look at facts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I would also just want you to have some consistency in your morality. That is all. Look at the facts and be consistent. Because with Chris... There is a long list. There's fucking BuzzFeed articles of everything that he was arrested for or accused of. And most of the shit on the list be stuff that he was either proven not to be true or some random shit that didn't even happen. And it's like, it's easy to just compile this shit, whatever. Going back to the Rihanna thing, right? I can't change nobody's opinion on Breezy when it comes to that. If you don't like Chris Brown because he, you know... Assaulted Rihanna, yeah. I'm with you. But at the same time, we should just also be consistent about other people that we support that have assaulted people or spoken on assault or did certain things about assault, especially NBA. Like apparently it's Ruffles. Ruffles Chips mm -hmm. was the one that didn't want to work with Chris Brown because of his past. But y'all worked with Charles Barkley, and Charles Barkley has said some flagrant shit about women and beating women in the past. Y'all work with certain people like Dr. Dre. We love Dr. Dre. He's literally got a black Oscar, a black Grammy named after him. We, yeah, Dr. Dre is a legend. Yeah, beats. But he put the beats on his on somebody before. Mm -hmm. And we just, it's just like, but with Chris Brown, he's the only person that gets held to the one incident. They even try to say, oh, he beat Karuchi. Nah, he, he, there's so much evidence. In fact, out there, even Ayanna came out years ago and was talking about how her team was trying to, like, get me to, like, go towards the whatever. And they asked her, was there physical whatever? And she was like, no. But 
she said he didn't hit her, but she was making it clear that domestic violence isn't only physical. It can be emotional. It can be... Mm-hmm. Or domestic abuse. True, Sorry. but they saying he beat her ass. So did he or did he not? And the answer was no. Yeah. So I just want people to be consistent. I'm not trying to change nobody's opinion. I can't. And I wouldn't be the one to do that. But I just want people to be consistent. That's all. I agree, man. I think Breezy is one of those artists that is just been there since we was, you know, ain't had no oh, hair wow. on our chin. You oh, know wow. what I'm saying? So... He also is an artist that has continued art since back then. He ain't just still on because y'all know who I am. Breezy should be on that fucking halftime stage saying, Hidden energy. I feel like he wouldn't. Me. You know what you do? That's, That's annoying. That's a big enough song to be on. You be trying to flex vocals now. I'm not singing. I wasn't singing. I can nah, sing. Nah, every, every podcast, podcast now, you be trying to add in some little vocals. Nah, y'all. I, I can edited get that the off. last part. I can get this one. I can get that line off way better than I just did. Oh, uh, now okay. You want to? You want to show us? <laughs> if I really wanted to sing and try, bro, I would have said. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right, though. And honestly, I don't think it will happen. And honestly, I don't even. I don't even trip about it no more. I just let people do the talking. Y'all see, I didn't get hop in none of them conversations for real because it was, It is what it is. I said, I'm going to just wait to my podcast and bring it to my podcast and talk about it on my platform. I ain't even going to pay no attention to it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not getting in the note. I can't do it with y'all no more. You see people talking about if they movie theaters were to take popcorn out and put in uh, fries. Can you imagine if you go to the movies and you say, let me get a large fry and they take the joint, the popcorn bucket and just fill it with french fries and they got the salt over there. You can put salt in it. Do you think that that would be better than mo- that would be good idea or a bad idea? The worst idea ever. Y'all need to think about the turnaround time on popcorn that's hot and the turnaround time on fries. Do you know how much we would waste? <laughs> we would waste so much. I'm thinking from a business perspective. We would be wasting so much fries. People would be coming back. These ain't. This ain't hot. And yep. then on top of that. The airiness of popcorn, you can eat it throughout a whole movie, and it's... Mm-hmm. I was going to say, you can roll nigga your that popcorn gets... bag up and put it back over exactly. there. Exactly. But... I'm... Do not... Fries will be a terrible... Now, I would love to have some fries in the movie sometimes. I will, because I'm, I'll be a hung... I'm a hungry nigga. Sometimes. I'm about to say, I'm surprised to hear that. Sometimes I go to the movies hungry. You you know how I do. I don't even go... I don't even deal with popcorn. Give me the loaded nacho and give me the churro donut. Have y'all ever had cold time. fries, though, Terrell? I ain't going to lie. Them fries would still smack. And low-key, you would be full. It got to be them uh, them America's Best Wing fries. You know the ones that's like potato-y, but they got like the little... You seen the picture that was going around nah, in the fries? Nah, you thinking steak? Steak fries? Not steak, no. They like regular fries, but they the fries. You ain't seen the picture of them fries that was going around that was like, these fries will turn a, a meal yes, into... Yes, yes, those yes, fries. yes. Those fries. If y'all do them, then you might be all right. It but you got to keep the popcorn. It might be a bad idea, y'all, but I think it'd be a good idea for appetite. Motherfuckers will be full and motherfuckers I will be buying them shits and people you will be- just have to say no fresh. I know this lady that I used to work with, she used to say, oh, fuck that. When I go to McDonald's, I always ask for fresh fries. And I'm like, you think that they're giving your black ass fresh fries every time just because you asked for it? Ten. If you think that, if you're watching this right now, and you go to McDonald's and you say, I want fresh fries, you are about to get whatever is next up in the line. Ten, if you somebody... We're not going to get some, you right. a special large fry and put it in the grease for you. And you're not about to hold our line up, man. Ten, you right until you get the lady or the guy... Have a good day! Until you get the man or the woman, that's the check bag, eat a fry, nope. These ain't fresh. They're going to give her fresh fries. We about to go put her shit right on the warm. I know they got a warm or something in there. <laughs> she going to get that same crinkle curl that she seen at the front. And she going to come right back in and ask for the manager. Because she got time to dance. I said, what's wrong with you? By the time, look, by the time you come back in, we already on the, another batch. Just give her those. <laughs> I but hate I- the McDonald's that's close to us because they will 100%... All the time, tell you to park in space number one. Soon, y'all will not see me talking about McDonald's. I'm going to say, what you talking about? McDonald's? McWhat? That's good. That's a joke. That's going to be good for your... Uh, That's a joke. McWhat? I'll you always dress fuck like with McDonald's. A, you dress like a... Uh, 
You dress like a Hogwarts alumni. This look like a you look like you went to school with Harry. And yeah, I know Harry. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, we did Quidditch together. You like a quid you played some Quidditch. I do look like I'm like Harry Harry Potter, but like Ja Cool. But black. You like some a nigga designed you in that game everybody was playing a couple months ago? You look like the skater Hogwarts legacy. You look like a friend. Negro leagues. <laughs> <laughs> You look more like you look like you was in the Tony Hawk skate game as a side character, boy. You was the black extra that they had NPC. over there. First off, that was an amazing game. Tony it was Hawk an amazing skate. Game. It was amazing. I wasn't good at it. I was it. Hey, look, we stand on the food thing. Uh, we just lost the creator of of Pop Tarts this past weekend. Um, rest in peace to that man. I grew up really smacking Pop Tarts, like really smacking Pop Tarts. Like Pop Tarts is a big part of my life. Like, I had a Pop-Tart last night. If they say, who in here has had a Pop-Tart? Raise your hand. My hand is so confidently raised. You know how you do this? Like, I low-key hope that you pick me so I can say my shit type shit when it comes to Pop-Tarts. Man, this motherfucker, the pop popcorn. Terrell, we grew up on Pop-Tarts. You should be... Professor. You should be right with me. I, 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 bro, I've eat, I, I've eat a Pop-Tart almost every other day. Not even lying Matt, to you. They made nine hundred seventy-eight million dollars last year in, oh, in two thousand twenty-two. I'm just saying that. But uh, anyway, I want to rank them real quick. Give me your top three uh, pop tarts. Three. Num- number three. I'm gonna go three, two, one. Mm-hmm. Number three is gonna be the brown sugar cinnamon. He's already wrong. And I know everybody's He's favorite wrong. is the brown sugar cinnamon. I know everybody's favorite is that. But if we keep it in a buck, that motherfucker is not good cold. And that is a that is a what? reason why you it's mean three. room temp. It's not good fresh out the pack. I you gotta warm it up at least thirty seconds or put it in a toaster because it's good warm. It's the best warm. <laughs> Number two, a train favorite. Good. Sorry, train. <laughs> uh, but number two is the strawberry frosted. Hundred percent strawberry frosted is a classic. It's the most palatable flavor. It's good cold, good cold, good hot. That's number two. Number one, the best Pop Tart that you can get is without a doubt Wildberry. Wildberry is the best Pop Tart Pop Tart. It's the purple, it's the one that's frosted. It's purple, got the blue line that goes through it. If you're a fan of Good Mythical Morning, shout out to them. YouTube channel, they did a video called Trying Every Pop Tart Flavor, and they literally rank them. Good Mythical Which one Morning won? is a great YouTube channel. Sorry to spoil it, but go look at where Wildberry places out of all of the other ones. Wow. <laughs> What's your okay? Well, yeah, y'all, what do y'all think? What, what, I'm gonna give you my two, and I knew you was gonna do that. And let me say something about Wildberry. Wildberry, we all know what happened. Wildberry is like the Bobby Schmurda of Pop Tarts. It's not. <laughs> it is. How? Wildberry was off the shelf, and everybody said. Oh, y'all remember Wildberry? Oh, where's Wildberry? Because remember, you could not get Wildberry for a good... You still can't find it like that. Terrell, you can definitely find Wildberry. It ain't the Wegmans. Terrell, fuck that expensive-ass store Wegmans. There's a bunch of shit you can't find in there. You they go got the brown pop- sugar cinnamon bullshit in there. They got brown... That's because... And you just let yourself know that Wildberry ain't that girl. Because guess what? She's not in every store. And if she was one of the best sell- sellers, nine hundred seventy-eight million. Anyway, it's Bobby Schmurda, remember he was gone, and we was like, damn. Remember he put out Bobby bitch. Remember he put out hot nigga, and then he got out, and then you started realizing, oh, okay. How many of y'all have had a wild berry pop tart post twenty twenty? I had one the other night. Post twenty eighteen, it was like, oh, when I was a kid, I liked the purple and teal. But now, I'm grown. Let me tell y'all my, my top three. Three first? I'll give it to you. Number three, I don't know how y'all going to feel about this, but it is just I bet it's. Three. I bet he's going to say s'mores. It's s'mores. I knew it. It is s'mores, Fucking Terrell. trash. It's a trash Pop-Tart. You're tripping. That is a terrible Pop-Tart. Let me tell y'all, the s'mores Pop-Tart for breakfast will set your morning up. You would think that you just had a ham and cheese, double egg, bacon Sausage McGriddle patty with you just it just feel like a meal, but it's a pop tart. The chocolate, the marshmallow, the breading is like it's that a, wheat, it's a graham it's like that wheat graham 
Oh my god! It's graham cracker. It is. You know what I take it S'mores back. Is it's up not there. a terrible pop tart, but s'mores is up there. Come it on, is. I'm on my I'm on my three. Okay, go ahead. Let me give a before I even get to my two and one. Let me give a honorable mention too. Terrence, no, I didn't get to do that because you was on your. All right, all right, we're just gonna go. And then my you do the honorable mention after. All right, back. My number two, brown sugar cinnamon. Brown sugar cinnamon is my number two. That is, that's a staple. You can eat it hot. You can eat it cold. You, you can, can eat, eat it, it cold. You can eat it from out the refrigerator. You can eat it when it's, you can eat it when it's hot, hot. It is a great pop tart, hot. It is amazing. It's I feel like if you got hot. a stomach ache and you eat that, you good. Breakfast. It could it's be breakfast. It could be hot. dessert. It could be. It's perfect. I love it. My number one. The number one pop tart very easily is frosted strawberry. Very easily number one. My that was my number two. Number one. That's why it's a reason why. That's, that's not my one. favorite though. But my number one, meaning, damn, I want a pop tart. What's the first thing that I think of? I think of frosted strawberry. Mm -hmm. That is the brand. That's true. That is the that's our that's brand. The standard, you know what yeah. I'm saying? That's the the standard. Yeah. Uh huh. That's so the, our list isn't really that interesting. I would say. For the pop tarts. What's your honorable mention? Blueberry. My favorite that pop tart is blueberry frosted. Blueberry frosted. Sorry. If you get any, if you eat a pop tart that's not frosted, you're in a league of your own. No, I don't know what you're, you're even doing eating that. You might as well get the damn. You might as well get some fig newtons or something. Nah, yeah. <laughs> you want yeah. some a different level with, with, with without the frosting? Mom used to get them joints, take them out the box, and just put the silver joints in there. You get a pop tart, don't know what you opening up. <laughs> That's like the person that said, "Let me get a hamburger, no cheese." Really? Meat and bread. <laughs> Bet. <laughs> nah, no bullshit. If you order a hamburger, you wild. Remember, you go to the. Uh, we used to get uh, cheese. Remember, we used to first of all, we talked about concession stand food forever. The best hot dog I've ever had in my life, I got from a Gwen Park versus Douglas, uh, football game right on three hundred one at Gwen Park. At day concession stand, that shit was fire. What ketchup and mustard? But you get a hamburger over that. <laughs> Let me get a hamburger. Let me get a hamburger for what? That's plenty of shit. But hey, God, all yes, and the foil, bro. You can't beat it. You cannot beat. You can't beat that. Go into a hungry. little league football game and get in one of them burgers. I feel like when crew get of age to play, my anxiety gonna be so bad. You won't even. I won't eat. be able to eat. Mm -mm. I'm gonna be so like hyped for him. Y'all not gonna let. Really. Y'all gonna let the can play football though. I don't want him to play football. No, I don't want him to get CTE. What's that? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want him to get CTE. I want him to, I want my boy to play baseball or soccer or Maybe my man might be in basketball. the chest. Basketball. Maybe he might be like the Queen's Gambit. I want him to yeah, I want him to do something. Well, yeah. Fuck you bitch ass nigga. Checkmate. Oh, recruiting. You can't talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Shannon Sharp giving us content for the last fucking three podcasts in a row. First it was Kat, then it was Monique, now Desi. And I think Desi was on before Monique. Am I, am I wrong about that? No, Desi just oh, went yeah, on. Oh, he did. He went on. Desi after. Banks, if you don't know who Desi Banks is, he does like Instagram skits. If y'all know about him and Parlay, he does like the white Air Force versus black Air Force. He does a lot of shit. He's been out for, for some years now. But he went on Club Shay Shay. Shannon Sharp's been on the roll. He was talking about... How he came up and how the girl that he was messing with didn't necessarily support him. And it opens the door for a specific conversation. I'm going to play the clip uh, so y'all can hear it. Yeah, um, that's when I was first, uh, you know, in my beginning stages, of, you know, really chasing my dream of comedy. Um, at the time, I felt like um, she didn't believe in my dream. And my goals. I used to want her to support me so much. You talking about his wife, um, his girl at the time. I, you know, I thought there was gonna be a woman I was gonna be with. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I did a lot of stuff with, with, with her. You know what I'm saying? Every dime that I got, and where I was working, I, I gave it to her. The only thing I wanted to do was get me a, a haircut and, and pay my cell phone bill so I could, you know, shoot my video. Right. Um, but I felt like at the time, the the money, uh, it wasn't coming fast enough. Right. You know, it, it wasn't there. So she went to you need you need to get a job. You need to do this. You need to do that. Um, well, I can't do this no more. So you you know you might have to you know go do something else. So that sent me to my grandma's house. You know what I'm saying? So I was staying with my grandma for a little minute. And at that moment, but that happened at late late at night. Well, that was like yeah 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 like. So she put you out like two three in the morning. 
Uh, yeah, I, and it's hey, crazy. Like I, I cried. Like I, I, I cried. Cry, cry, I was crying already. Like you know, you know when you chasing something, man, you trying to make this, you trying to make this shit work. And man, I remember this shit like yesterday. Bro. <laughs> like I don't try to talk to her. She like, boy, if you don't go to sleep, I'm like, what? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, damn, like, okay. And that, that made me cry even harder. So I just walked in, the, you know, walked in the living room and I was just like, damn. Shit, like, all right, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. And like I'm I said- I'ma pause it right there. So, cause, because basically, mm. that's the gist of it. A lot of the response to that clip of Desi talking about how, yo, I just wanted to like do the video shit and I feel like she didn't believe in my dream. And he was talking about how the money he was making, he would give it to her, whatever. And then she told him that like, yo, you need to get a different job type shit. And a lot of the response to his to that clip was, oh, um, what did the girl say? She said, you tell a nigga to get a job and now you're a part of his villain story or something like that. And there's a lot of people that were saying, well, I don't think the girl was wrong for telling you to get a job because you know, yeah. X, Y, Z. <laughs> and then that brought me to the other clip that was going around about the girl that was like, if you don't make 50, if you make $50,000 and that's all you make, you should stop dating. You seen the- I saw that. The, yeah. The, the drink that was saying that. And it, it really opened the conversation for me. I want to ask you. Based on that clip and the response and based on some of these other clips that's going around, right? We know black folks talk about some of this stuff too often. Do you think if you don't have money, so what do you think about that statement? This is, the, the, this is what I'm asking you. Because I feel like you'll be able to answer it. It's not one of those loaded ones that you got to think too much. Right. The statement is, if you don't have money or if you're not financially stable, you should not date. What do you think about that statement? If you don't have if you're not financially stable, don't date. I disagree. All right. I think. I, 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 oh, okay. Go ahead. I, I didn't want to load. I didn't want to put the question out there. That was a loaded question. And you had yeah. to. I disagree. I think if you don't have. I think if you have zero dollars to your name, you can date. I think you need to date like you have zero dollars to your name. I think people with zero dollars to their name, you you can't talk to the girl who wants you to have five dollars to your name. Bet it's gonna be. I think it's somebody out there for. Because guess what? The girl was the dude with zero dollars to his name. You have to date the girl with zero dollars to her name or well, somebody that's not worried about that. Like, also, we talking about the rarity of it, of you having zero dollars to your name. Let's say you make forty thousand dollars a year. I don't think that you shouldn't date. I think you should be dating the same way that I dated when I only made forty thousand dollars a year, which was I wasn't talking to these. Mm. It's it was that it's always been women that have wanted rich niggas, y'all. This is not a new thing. I'm just letting all the youngins know. It's always been women that would rather talk to a girl, a, a nigga that has more money. And there's always been men out here with more money. Yeah. It's just, it wasn't, it didn't seem like that was what, I don't know if it was maybe social media or whatever, but I knew when I only made 40 grand a year, only made 20 grand a year, I was talking to people who were kind of on my level, who weren't expecting me to make thousands more and if they did then i was off it the desi bank shit is different than that question though and that is something i wanted to respond to but okay i do think the desi bank situation is different than the if you're not if financially you stable because yeah. people were saying that he shouldn't have been dating her because i'll ask you what you think about that people were saying that he shouldn't have been dating her you know or trying to take her serious if he didn't have a a set Thing, man, you know what I'm saying. Look at this nigga. Look at look at him now. And where is his ex or his girl? But that's what I, that that's the that's another one of the points. Are y'all gonna say the same thing about Beyonce? You talking about the the dude she took the prom? Man? Yeah. I mean, y'all will look at Brian and say, "Look at this fucking idiot. She didn't want to hold her down. He wanted to do this. He this. He he that with her. It's like, what do y'all mean? He should. She was right in telling him to get a job. Look where he's at doing. What this man is literally saying that he cried for. That's my thing. He said, I remember literally just trying to talk to Shawty and then she said, if you don't just go to sleep. And he said that that made him cry because he knew I want this shit and I'm with a motherfucker who don't believe in me. I have been there before. I know what it's like to shed those tears. Mm -hmm. I know what, it, what that's like. And I think... Fuck his ex and fuck what anybody got to say because it worked. You don't got to be with me 
if I'm Will Smith Pursuit of Happiness. You don't got to be with me. You can be Thandy Newton and run your ass right out the street if you want. Because you don't think that I'm ever going to get this bone scanner density joint mm -hmm. to work. You don't ever think this shit will work. I'm like, yo, I just got a part for you. Uh, a part for it that I think is going to work. Y'all remember acrimony? 100%. That's what I was Remember that? Say. It's acrimony. 100%. If you don't want to stay down with me, you don't des if you want to leave before I get this thing kicking, oh, you don't get to come back or have anything to say once you see I'm making millions from it. None of you can say that Desi Banks was wrong for kicking Shawty to the curb and getting with somebody who actually believed in him because his shit worked. Now, let's take it off of Desi, right? Because you yeah. write about that, and that's actually a great point that you're making. Uh, and everybody should be inspired by that. But, not but, although... When you talk about like the average people, right? Yeah. Because we looked at Desi's situation and it's amazing, but the reality is, a lot of people aren't aren't don't have Desi's story. Desi does have a great story. He has the acrimony story. Y'all can't really say shit because the dream that he talked about crying about worked. He's sitting in front of Shannon Sharp. He's world. He's he's nationally known. You know what I'm saying? He could go. He, he doesn't work. This is what he does. His shit worked out. But the regular dudes. That make the average 40, 50,000, like they telling him not to date. I feel like that is just the biggest misinformation, misinformative piece of advice to tell somebody oh, if you make like 40, 50 grand, you shouldn't date. Yeah, I didn't like that at all. If you make $50,000 a year, you make $24.04 an hour. That's if you make $50,000 a year on paper. If on paper they say, hey, your salary is $50,000 before tax, you make $24,04. I'll never forget when I went from best, when I was in Best Buy and I finally started to like go up mm -hmm. and I started to say, oh, okay, this is my hourly, but what is that yearly? The reality is the average black guy, because it's only us having this fucking conversation. But the average black guy, I've always said we made around, make around 40 grand. I do think it's fucked up to tell somebody. Not to date if you're not all the way financially stable because to me, and I mean, I'm not trying to sound like a brokey or nothing like that or, or make excuses for, for people that don't have their situation together. It's just, it be sounding like sometimes we don't give a fuck about who a person is no more. Yeah. It's more about what you got, what you bring to the table. What do they have or what can they do? Like, is, that, is he a good guy? Does he love his mom? Does he want kids? Is he a God-fearing man? Is he nice? Did he hold the door for you? Is he handsome? I mean, like, damn. Yeah. All the conversations we see are about money. And it's fucking up everybody because now people feel like we if I know ain't got that the money. We know that that's an internet conversation. And you're watching this on via the internet as well. But at the same time, that shit skews perception for real. Because now a lot of men are like, all women want these days is this. And yeah. that's not all. But the conversation <clears throat> keeps coming back to that. Now, yeah. There's a reason why women want somebody stable because they've probably been with a few guys that they had to help out. But that's never the crux of the story. It's never, I've been with a bunch of guys that I had to help, so I would like a man that makes this. It's yeah. always, if you're not doing this, then you can't. Uh-uh, I can't do that. And that's the one that goes viral. Yeah, I feel like the girl saying that was an idiot. And I don't think most women even think like I agree. Like her. I'm talking about the content. I know, though. Did you see the girl with the Shake Shack joint? Where the dude took it to Shake yeah, Shack? Yeah, that's fake. And they I knew said it, it was fake. fake. And they said it was fake. And that's that's what I wanted to uh, on the heels of that. Hold on, wait, because I ain't get a. All right, oh, yeah, wait, 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 say, bad, say, 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 say. I was just gonna talk about how the content. Now we making fake content about that conversation. I, bro, I feel like I said that on this podcast before that the fake content that we make for a joke gets received on a real level. It's like when people got upset with me this week. This past week, and shout out to, uh, bro, I don't even remember his, I don't know, I'll never know how his name is named, but I know his name is Meech. Y'all know who he is. Uh, I got into it with him about the nail painting thing. Oh, Demetrius Harmon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good Demetrius guy. Harmon, great dude. Uh, didn't know he listens to the podcast, and if he's hearing this, shout out to him. He's, he's dope. We've always thought that he was funny. When I seen his tweet, I, and it was, I was trying to tell him through, in the DMs, I was like, bro, I didn't even, it was not energy behind it. I'm just that. Y'all know me on Twitter. I'm not, I'm not, oh, this is, this, I'll say it. And I normally don't know how I look until y'all start telling me. So anyway, working on that, but I said something about his nails and I feel like the response, what was we, what was we just talking about? We were talking about content being fake. Oh, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. 
uh, there's a real reason why people paint their nails, and then there's dudes, there's dudes that make content with it. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. I think, or there's a real origin why. Like, I don't, the reason why we got into it, y'all, is because in his video, he was basically saying that you know his his painted nails was was starting conversations with women, and I just felt like that was cat. I felt like you making content, like I get it, but. I don't. I just didn't think that you know. What do you think about the women that said, "Oh, I would like the nails." I don't. You don't see none of them women with a man with painted nails. You never see it. It's a bunch of women who just want men to live free, and I do too. I just thought that the content part was where we starting to skew the line between what's real reality and what is content. You know what I'm saying? Y'all are making content arguing because you want to spark a conversation. Like, I felt like in Meech's tweet, it was like, y'all, y'all dudes think that I'm worried about y'all, man, really, these, this, these nails is getting me the ladies. That's starting a conversation, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh-huh. and I feel like people take a conversation starter and we start inserting, like, real life shit. Like, oh, I right, bet you see the girl with the oysters, you see how black women, you see how our black women are? And it's like, that ended up being fake. Uh-huh. This isn't about everybody, Yeah. Like, I feel like my tweet about him and to him, this is what I really meant to say, became about me talking about every man who chose to paint their nails and why. You know what I'm saying? When mm-hmm. I was really just saying, oh, no, nah, I feel like this, you, getting girl, you, you saying this about you getting girls, I feel like that's cat. But I feel like because of how we look at, at content, it is almost like the measuring raw. Our content now s- speaks a lot to who people at least perceive us to be. And is that in the, only in our community that that happens? I feel like it happens more so on a social media level. And honestly, we like to downplay the socials and, oh, it's just Twitter, it's just Instagram. But it, we don't live in 2009 no more. Like, yeah, back in 2009, when this shit started, the Asian dude that's never been to the States, his perception of black folks came from movies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, I see. I know how these motherfuckers are. It's the exact same way. Like a lot of, like we talk about how we learn about shit based on that. But now Twitter will definitely make you, Twitter, Instagram will definitely make you say, all right, bet. This is how they are. But the Desi Banks situation though, because that's, mm-hmm. we went from the Desi Banks thing straight into basically if you should make 50,000. And I felt like he was saying something a little bit different. Like, nah, he was. But it, it just, with do Desi, you? Because what do you think about what Desi Banks said in regards to the actual person? I agree with what Desi Banks said to the dude that's an up-and-coming rapper. I agree that if you are with a girl that is not at least even just supporting what you do, she don't got to listen to everything that you put out or whatever. But if she's not supporting you and you feel like Desi Banks, where you going to sleep crying, feeling like you in this battle alone, you need to leave her ass. Who give no, a fuck if the pussy good? Who care if she's a good person, good family? If you feel like she not standing beside you on what you want to do, trust me, bruh. If you tuck it and stay with her, your relationship's going to be ailed regardless because you're going to use that against her later. If mm-hmm. you don't follow your dream now and you just say, fuck it, I'm going to stay with her, then what you're going to do is you're going to compromise your dream. You're going to know that you didn't go the full way, not because... You tried and it didn't mm-hmm. work, but because I chose to stay with her and listen to her and actually get a job. Yeah. that's Like, cool. if she not going to be ready, willing to go broke with you for the shit and that's what you want to do. Nah, yeah. And I think, I think no girl should have to go broke with you, though. I do so agree. I ain't saying that, but you know. I also don't think his, what he said warranted the responses he got. Shout out to Sean C. I watched Sean C's live on it and- he said exactly what I was thinking, which is, I don't see why people are saying, oh, you tell a nigga to get a job and now you're a part of his origin story. Like, Desi didn't, like, shit on the girl too bad. He spoke on his experience. He didn't say, like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, he can only speak on his experience. He said, I thought she was going to be who I was with. I gave her this. I did this. And then, like, damn, it just didn't work out because I believe in this. She didn't believe in my dream. I don't think that means, oh, she told me to get a job and oh my God, this nigga wanted to follow his dream and it worked. And Loki, she could have been right. That's the thing. That's too. the thing too, yes. 
She could have been right. She probably it, was the right. The bad thing is his shit worked. And that means, look, fellas, sometimes your girl is right. And sometimes your girl has to leave. You got to say, fuck it, I'm going to do this shit. And then the shit not work. But, like, you need to die on that hill. Die there. I'd rather you, fellas, I'd rather you leave Shawty. Try what you're trying to do. When it don't work, see if you can get Shawty back. You was right. Take that L before I'm telling you, mm -hmm. you will resent the fuck out of her for keeping you away from what you feel like you could have done. Yeah. Not knowing if you could have really been balling because she told you to get a job. Exactly. And you thought, and look, imagine when you get that job, right? Imagine Desi doesn't do this comedy shit, just gets the job. Guess what? The job he gonna be making fifty thousand. The job he could be making sixty, seventy thousand. And now guess what? Oh well, I will. Well, if you made more money, well, if you made more money, walk me away from the dream, right? Mm -hmm. Into a job that's really not enough. And it's like, well, you know, I'm still got this going, but I'm working this job, fellas. Don't do it. Yes. You feel me? Especially not for her. Go and read the way of the superior man. It's nothing in this world you should be doing. For your girl. You should be doing the shit for yourself as a man. There's nothing you should be doing for your girl. Everything for you in support of your lady. Because you're a man. It's all going to fall on you. Let's say your girl want to go to a restaurant early in the morning, but you might have some work to do, right? And you say, you know what? I'm going to go to the restaurant to satisfy her. L, this is what I mean when I say you shouldn't be doing things to satisfy your girl. You got work, and you got your girl. See, that's like a big thing to say. Watch this. All right. You go, you take her, to, take her to lunch, right? Or you take her to the breakfast. When you come home from the breakfast, you were supposed to be working, but now you're behind, right? Her belly's full. She cool. You're kind of stressed because you coming in the house like this. Keys thrown over there. Shit, it's in the laptop up. You trying to work? She comes in good, right? Happy wife. I get it. But that won't last long because now you're nicked. And guess who's in a grand special mood? Your girl. Now your girl shouldn't have to, but for real, for real, you're kind of hot. You really can't be bothered. You know how you get behind on your work, Terrell? And G's mm. right there and you have to tell your girl, hey, yo, I got to really focus on this. So, uh... Like, fellas, y'all know there's no woman in the world that receives they that. They don't like it. They don't like that at all. When you tell your girl, hey, look, I really got to focus on this. Like, and I hear what you're saying, but fuck, fuck it, fuck it. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you don't want to put yourself in a place where now you're going to be the one that's, damn, nigga, what the fuck? We just came for breakfast. You weren't supposed to eat the girl. That's why I say, fellas, there are so many times in your life where you'll say, you know what? I'm going to just do this and then I'm going to pick the man shit later. Hey, look, if it's playing 2K, we're not talking about that. You feel me? Right. We're not talking about she want to go to the restaurant, but I want to get a game done on my, my career. And Terrence said, don't do nothing for your girl. Nah, we saying when you make a choice, it should be your choice because you are the man. You, if you leading, you're going to pick the what? Nah, you using chance and choice. You sound like you're... Parody stuff. Come on. <laughs> I get. I mean, everybody should read that book. It's just some stuff in the book that's like. I don't think it's okay. rocket science, y'all. We're not talking about everything. If you in your soft boy era, if you want to be on your black boy joy, go ahead and do all of it. I Fuck never it. said that. <laughs> soft black man era. Soft black nah, man. Nah, yeah. You niggas are putting uh. Nah, but you know what? I do agree that we should take care of ourselves. So. Self-care, I do agree. What? I ain't going to shit on the whole soft area for us. Oh, no, I'm not shitting on that either. I'm, you know. But I just do think we need to get back to, like, real connection. That, that, the biggest thing with that is, like, the whole, if you don't have money, don't date thing is kind of, like, taking us away from human interaction being more important than what we have. And it comes from us not thinking we could, should build together anymore. So, but, went a little long on that. When you meet a woman and she's single, because first I'll say this, shout out to everybody that's watching Love is Blind. Um, apparently it's a crazy um, season Season this 
the season that just dropped, there was a girl on there who said something about being, uh, and this is no shade. Uh, she said she lost her father when she was young. But uh-huh. she said, basically, growing up, I had to handle things on my own. I had to, you know, since my pops wasn't around, I had to basically handle stuff on my own. I had to basically step up to the plate. I had to do this. I had to do that. And I told h man, I said, believe it or not, that is a red flag when you're dating a woman. For what? A woman Them that says that she, her father's one, not in her life, and two... Oh, I had to step up and handle things on my own. So I do this on my own or I do this on my own. It is not a bad thing. I'm not saying that this is a bad thing. It's a reality for some people. It's a reality for a lot of people. I just people I just think people should understand the red flag that that is. As a guy, Terrell, why is it a red flag? Because it if I'm somebody that's courting you, I don't feel like you're gonna open as much as I will open. Your door won't be as wide open as mine will be. I'm coming to the this I'm coming into a full full open. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if you're somebody that, oh I had everything wrong, I had to do it. You're just telling you're you're showing me your don't show me your walls and expect me to, you know what I'm saying? This is a home improvement. You got I'm not about to just be over here like Tim and yeah. you a motherfucker talk. You know what I'm saying? I I just feel like you're it, sh- it, you're showing me that you're not gonna be let me lead. You're gonna be it's going to be a, You're a go- tug in, like a tug of war for, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And it shouldn't be that. And I'm not saying that I need to leave. I'm saying, are we going to be able to meet in the middle? I don't think... You, so. do, you do what you do and I do what I do. Or is it going to be like a tug of war? But when you say you do what you do, I do what I do. Because I mean... You're not like, talking about you being a man and, and leading the household? Yeah, but like there are certain... Elements of I feel like that's such a dated thing though. Never dated. As I a man think it's dated. Never like, dated. I leave my household for sure, but I would be lying if I told you G didn't when also splitting that lead with me. We're not talking about because it's certain shit that I lead that I take the lead on, and it's certain shit that she do, and she lets she allows me. You know what I'm saying? Without a tug, and I'm not saying allow as in gives me permission. Yeah, I'm talking about she let me handle shit. Because she don't come from that. And if you're dealing with a woman that says, I handle everything on my own, I feel like when we when it comes to decision making, it probably would be a little bit more trouble there than you're gonna be dealing with somebody who don't You're gonna it. be masculine. Yeah. 100 percent That's the that's the very easy way of that's saying it. That's the very easy way of saying it. Fellas, you're gonna be in a relationship with a bruh who you feel like instead of this being your girl who looks at you for somebody who can make decisions. You're with somebody that is trying to make the decision for you. Or we got to talk about this shit or go back and forth. How you feel about a woman that says, I want a man that can put me in my feminine? There's- if I have to be masculine, because there are some men that these women have dated mm-hmm. that, that want to borrow their car, that don't, whatever. Trust me, I get it. Hold on, hold on, wait. Don't rush that part. What do you have to say about that? Because that's an element of it that they probably would say. How would y'all feel, ladies, if if a man said, "I'm not going, I'm not opening your car door unless you show me that I can be in my masculine. You gotta, you gotta prove to me in order for me to be masculine." It would just sound stupid. It's just an excuse that women would use to. It's like an excuse you make for not being feminine. And I don't think that you have to be feminine, but you need to understand if you out here dating, we talking about love is blind, y'all. Like. Like, I need to watch that joint. Anyway, I'll say this. A-Train said there was a good equivalent to fellas. Shit, that fella say, right? Because mm-hmm. you see how she said she lost her father and had to handle things on her own. There are a lot of fellas out there who grew up with just moms in the crib that said, you know, well, I watched my mom work a couple jobs and she was able to provide for me, so I want a woman that works. Fellas, oh yeah, I'm telling you, it's not... The chess move, or it, it ain't it ain't hitting like you think. That line, it's you, not. It is a red flag, ladies. Am I wrong? Hundred percent. The ladies are like, finally, yes, a train. Because I get it. Nobody gives a fuck. Your nah, girl yeah. shouldn't have to work because your mom worked. Because why did your mom work three jobs? 
Because your dad wasn't because your dad wasn't around. Right. So she had to. No shade. No shade, but somebody doesn't have to come and be because if she grew up with her father and mother, or her father showed her what she should expect from a man in a household. Why should she lessen that? Who are you to tell her? Yeah, you see, she got two. She thinking she got a dad who does everything for her father, for her mom, pays for everything, right? And you expect her to get a job and hustle because your mom had to get a job and hustle. That's where you call y'all. Probably should just date. Shouldn't date, you know? But nah, but you see. But also, Terrence, it's the red flag from the from the from the from the guy. And why? Because we said why is a red flag from the woman? Why is it a red flag? This a red flag for a guy. That's a red flag from the guy because you're looking for another mom. That's it, fellas. That's what it's gonna look like. And Terrence. You might not think that, but this is what it looks it's like. It's the same thing with the women where you're looking for daddy. Yeah. Look. You're looking for someone to take care of you. And this is what I was saying back about the Desi Banks situation. And how we don't even be talking about human shit. I love this person because I love their smile and I love their laugh. And they love what I love. We met at the, the golf range. He loves golf. I love golf. And he wants kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I love her. And look, she she's funny. She's actually, you know, crazy because I watch anime. She's in anime. We met at the, you know, uh, Comic Con. But I uh, feel like there's a went, lot of that, though, Troy. You can't say there's not away. a lot. There's, there's I do that. that exists, of course, because that's just the natural way we attract the people. But we've centered all of these conversations. And think about what we're talking about. I'm about to say, you. we were just talking he about the He wants a content. woman that works. She wants a man that does this. It's all, we'd be talking about so much transactional shit. And we, have, we don't know anything about what these two people even like about each other. I guess you got a point with that. But that's very far from what we Man, talking Terrence, about. You that's backwards. The, that's no. That's the overarching. Because what point. does that have to do with him saying, "I saw my mom work three jobs and provide for me"? It's like, bruh, somebody broke our damn gate. Um, but I, I mean, I, I, you right though. May, let me not stray from this because it isn't. All I'm saying is those two things, those two layers of independency, are definitely unfortunate. But like. On Love is Blind, there's a girl who has a kid, but she's like hesitant to say it, right? Mm -hmm. Not because she's ashamed of her kid. She loves her kid probably with everything she got. It's just she knows how it's perceived. Mm -hmm. And I think in this same situation when you probably did grow up as a lady and you had to handle things on your own, you need to realize that when you dating these fellas out here, they hear that and feel like, oh, she's going to be this tough rough ass girl that's not going to need me for shit cuz you had to handle everything on your own. So, you know what I'm saying? You a girl that take out your own trash and you out cutting the grass and all of that. If you that type of girl, it's nothing wrong with that. You're just going to be perceived a specific way cuz come on. Yeah. You know? I think also if you a dude out here talking about you, I watch my mom work so you know, I'd rather have a girl at work. Then you're going to look like you're dependent on a woman. You're going to look like if when you get with your girl, you, she's going to have to fold your clothes and How cook you though? Every, every food every night. And it might not be what you're expecting, but you're going to look like that. I don't think it's all the way wrong to want a woman that works. No, no, no. Or it's want, not. Want we're just talking about that. the I saw my mom work three jobs. So, Oh, yeah, yeah, 100%. Uh, There's definitely nothing wrong with wanting a woman that works. to your mom, period, is kind of like... But then again, it's the same that we said the girl... Has a dad that did everything for her mom. We can't tell her not to expect a man to do some of the things her dad did. But in the same token, we're telling the guy, nah, that since he saw his mom work three jobs, he can't want a woman to work. If that makes sense. Well, that's, well because we let we lean into the fact that oh well, fellas, she saw her dad doing this, so you she saw her dad doing that for her mom. You saw exactly. your mom doing it for you. That's different. Her mom was doing it alone. I mean, his mom was doing it alone. Think about it. So you're right. You're right. A woman knows. It. I think a woman sh should be understood too. If, if your dad bought you everything that you want, you shouldn't be out here expecting to get with a man that's going to do the same thing at, at a specific level uh, unless you can get there. Like, look what Steve Harvey said about, well, if you have daughter, a daughter, he was like, yo, she's got everything she wanted in her life. So let's say you have a daughter. You don't want to give her everything she can have before a nigga can, uh, young, one of these young niggas can? I, de I definitely would as a father, but I, I, I don't think that she should be expecting at a certain age for everything to be paid for. You see, I think different from you. 
I would want a girl to find me. I would want my daughter to find her equivalent of me in say, terms of know. not like who I am, but like who I am to her mom. Find your yeah. version of me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If your dad really is, if your dad is trash and he's dogging your mother out, then that's one thing. But it's like, yeah. Because you, I wouldn't want my daughter to grow up and think, oh, well, I can't expect a man to do everything. Ah, yeah. Because look, I don't want her to, I want her to be realistic, but A-Train got two good, two good dads that are in her life that I'm sure she don't ever have to be like, hey, yo. I need a man that's gonna pay my bills. She never needed a man for that. Uh-huh. Cause when you got a good dad, your your her dad has told me she'll always be good. Straight up. So it's kind of like bet. You know what I'm saying? I would say the same thing. This nigga come into your life talking about, yeah, you know, I could pay for this, I could pay for that. Cool. But guess what? I'm her father that gives a fuck. So she'll always be good. So you see how money don't impress men. It don't. Money impressed women. You know what I'm saying? That's why it's like, you're right about like going and getting you. Because it ain't about getting a nigga with money. I don't need a, I, I wouldn't want her to just go get a nigga that could pay for everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's why, and you see, that's where it also comes back to what I was talking about. I don't think it's the same as. Think about it. The girl father cares more about who you are. These niggas are focused on bet. If I want to date, I need to get money. And then they get money. And turn into these red pill niggas because you're really not that interested of a guy outside of the money you got. Yeah, yeah. So it's but, more so but the the mother thing. You you're 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 trying to put a cape on for that. I'm gonna put a cape on for that. Your mom shouldn't have had to work three jobs to take care of you. That's you know? a fact. So you can't expect to get a woman or or you know what, if you need a woman that works, then I say there's women out there that definitely more women that work than women that don't. I'll say that. 100%. So there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not shitting on that. Just saying you saw your mom do something, so I expect to don't say that, bro. Even if it's a fact. I, I don't, yeah. It's just not. You we was talking about wrong. them two lines. Like, I told okay, you you dating? about that before. Don't say that while dating. I talked to Jay about that before. One of our friends. That exact same conversation. You shouldn't say it. Your fellas. mom hustle. Your mother but these hustle. Women, you got you as a man got to come at this different. Yeah. So, I'm glad you understood that because you tend to you know. No 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 no. Hundred percent. We had the conversation at a Cheddar's. My man Denzel behind the bar. <laughs> <laughs> and Don was there. Don remember Don was there. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! We got to get back together, bro. I was thinking about that. Some about some of our friends we just haven't seen in a minute. We got to all get back. Oh. It's not course of action. It's chance and a choice. You got the drop? No, that. <laughs> in life, things happen. Situations arise. And in those situations, you get a chance and a choice and a choice and a chance. And you know. I fucking hate that. What he chooses to do with his choice. I mean, his chance. Well, that's his choice. <laughs> <laughs> I, can hate this I can never get this shit straight across. <laughs> I mean, it's chance. <laughs> what you say is the difference between chance and a choice and course of action? It's basically the same fucking thing. Course of action is what would you do in this situation? Chance and a choice is basically would you rather? Basically. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Course of action is you in the barbershop, this nigga, yang. Oh, my bad, dog. What's your next course of action? You know what I'm saying? Like, there's that. I'm going to get up and do this. Well, chance and a choice, you got to pick one. In this situation, Terrell, this is going, I hope this isn't triggering for anybody, but we men, we talk like men. Okay. This girl, never been married, but has a 10-year-old daughter, or talk to this girl who has no kids, but has been married before and divorced. Give me the woman that has been... Uh, Married before and divorced. Married before and divorced? Mm-hmm. Then they both the same age. And let's put it up there. You know, this don't... Okay, yeah. Because married and divorced at like 24, you could have just got with somebody and y'all was trying to be. But I mean, like, they both... Let's go 28, 29. You know okay. what I'm saying? So there's, you, you're a grown motherfucker. You had a 10-year-old daughter. means you had a daughter at 18. Mm-hmm. 
um, but you've never been married. This person's been married and divorced, no kids. Give me the person married, divorced, and no kids. Because I feel like the lessons that you learn coming out of the marriage, hopefully, I feel like I would rather deal with, and this may sound fucked up, but I would rather deal with the baggage of somebody post-relationship versus taking on a child that I may not be ready to insert myself as a father figure for. Dang if it. I'm just dating. I have a son. So I would not mind yeah. dating somebody that has a child now. Now. But yeah. on a raw spectrum, I think I would only be compromising her life if it don't work out between us versus me introducing myself to this young girl and her losing another father figure if we don't work out. Because that's the part that people don't think about. Um, for me... How's that for your chance of choice? I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. I think I would probably do the same thing. I think I'd probably talk to... Only thing I was going to say is this, that a marriage and a divorce is scary. Okay. Because you don't know why. And I feel like that's deeper than uh, a breakup. Because there's actual legal decisions made and then I guess unmade. I would probably say that the girl would... I probably would pick the... I'm gonna go with the the girl that's divorced. I would do that. Yeah, but why though? Explain yourself on why. I would go why because I feel like a kid still ties you to somebody for sure. And if you dating, I feel like, like you said, maybe you don't want to tie yourself to being that. But like we talking about, we talking about grown people. You could miss a great ass opportunity. This is a girl that had her kid early. Uh huh. So yeah, she got a ten year old daughter, but she's twenty eight. She had her kid early. She could be more mature, ready for life. Just made a mistake when she was young, versus this girl who's twenty eight and divorced, mm -hmm. no kids. It could look like what's yeah. good with you. That's what I'm saying. When you think about it on the surface, you think no brain up. Whatever. I don't want to deal with nobody's kid, but. You could be dealing with somebody's great... You could be dealing with a great woman who happens to have a kid or a terrible woman. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, but she don't got no kids, so we, ain't, we can always, you know, hit the bar off the late night. With, this, with the girl with the kid, when you third... When, hey, fellas, when you get older... Let me tell you something. You're going to start fucking with shorties with kids. We just got invited to a cabin trip. And, fellas, that's what you're going to start And normally... Off. Exactly. Normally, we will be like, bet! We got to think about who going to have the baby. Oh, shit. Oh, you talking about you. I'm, I'm thinking, thinking about going... just dealing with somebody with a kid, period. You got to be ready for, like, you can't just say, yo, I'm coming to pick you up. Be ready, girl. Her daughter in the house. <laughs> that could be a reason why you wouldn't want to deal and with that. And that might be the reason yeah. why you might just not want to deal with that. Because it is something to take on. And I applaud all the men who take it who, on. Yeah, yeah, who yeah. Who take 100. that on because... It's so important for the kids. And I think when you get older, fellas, that shit is not going to bother you for real, for real. Like, that's a misconception. 100%. That's the youngins talking, oh, I can't fuck with nobody with no kids. I mean, Honestly, I though, get it, though. I get it, though. If you for did, sure. Because imagine, as you're older. Imagine, that eight, imagine that 18-year-old girl. Like, you got a 10-year-old daughter now. Yeah. Imagine her with a 3-year-old. And you 21. You don't want to deal with somebody. It'll be different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Even if you're dating that. a girl that's 28 but got, like, a 2-year-old, that is kind of like, okay, that's a little fresh. Okay, real, you know? real quick, what do you think about the C.J. Stroud, Amber Rose situation from the past weekend? We talked about the Dre and Jalen Green, and Amber Rose did come out and say, I don't even know him. He just gave me a ride back. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody yeah. knows they agree. C.J. Stroud is a young 22-year-old rookie quarterback. Amber Rose just turned 40. Uh huh. He was spotted giving her a ride from the All Star Weekend. I think CJ trying to get active, but one hundred percent. But I think Amber, Amber Rose, you've been it in the game a little, long it enough. It looks predatory. She been in the I'm game sorry. long enough to know what she. You know what you're doing. You know we wasn't. You know everybody was gonna look at that a certain way. Don't act like you don't know. I don't even know CJ. I don't know him. He was a nice young man. He gave me a ride, girl. You know that's the rookie of the year. Right. You know who the fuck it is. You know who that is. You got in his car. Because if you didn't know who he was, why you didn't would, take an Uber? Yeah. 
So anybody who don't know, you can just ask you if you're if they're a nice man and you getting a ride. Please. Right. She about to be caught. She about to be ringed. She I like mean, Uncle Ice. I can smell a nigga with money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, she see the nigga shining. Uh, hey, look. I think it looks worse on CJ Stroud than it do for Amber Rose, though. Why? Because people are like, oh, my God, disgusting Amber Rose. Really? Yeah. It's Amber Rose. She got two, don't she got two different names tatted right here? Her sons. Her sons' names are tatted on her forehead. Come on. Let's not act like this is supposed to be the moral queen. Of course you're going, if Amber Rose is single, Terrence, she's going to be out here doing this. I think it's more on CJ Stroud to be a little bit more careful. Like, come on, CJ, you, you can make a better choice than this. You don't got to go over for that. Let's, okay, bet. Let's flip this. Come on, CJ. Let's see if we can, because CJ is uh -huh, a man. He's, oh, All making right. the money. Feel me? Sure. You're going to get, CJ, you're going to have girls dropping at your feet. But you, you could choose, come on, you could choose better than Amber Rose. What is, There's nothing what is, wrong with, I'm not going to say there's something wrong with Amber Rose, but come on, you know, you know what that is. Uh, 100%. Amber Rose, yeah, 100%. Let's flip it, though. 40-year-old man, 22-year-old woman. Do we tell that Leonardo 20... Leonardo DiCaprio? Do we tell the 22-year-old, you know better than that, this is on you, you need to pick a better man, or are we going to say that the 40-year-old nigga... Was predatory, and of course he's gonna have his influence. He's a man. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna. She's not gonna be able to oversee his whatever. We have to keep the exact same energy for these predator, predator ass women. It's the same thing. Y'all know what these young niggas is about. You're, you know what you're doing. You old as hell. Date a forty year old or thirty nine year old. You forty. I bought women like to date older men. Where's the fifty year old niggas? Oh, you want to date the young niggas that you can get their money. We can't really get mad at these ladies. So you can't put it on CJ Stroud. Do you know that men actually do do what you're talking about? Do you know men actually do what you're talking about? Saying that these young impressionable girls who get pimped, because they are getting pimped. I 100% agree. That they should be thinking different. I 100% agree that these men take advantage of these younger girls because they know they're young. They know they, they, can, they can impress them with their money, their houses and shit. Yeah. But these older women, especially these BBL joints, the legacy BBL joints like Drea, Amber Rose, Bernice, Burgos, they know they got influence. And so they can swindle a young nigga. Mm -hmm. I think it I is... I feel like it's the same... Pre it's the same it should be treated the same as predatory. I think... CJ, you got the world in your hands. You are the NFL player. You 21, bro, 22. I think it takes for us to turn you around and say, hey, bruh, this is an old vulture. We know what she about. Like, but she's still fire. So you just got to be careful. Bro, you know, these women, these women, did you see the tweet that was talking about how the OGs are still in the game? Mm -hmm. Like the young, there was a tweet that was going around where it was like the young girls can't even pop out for real because the OG still out here getting CJ Stroud. You know, she nah, not he yeah. not walking with the latest young joint. He walking with Amber Rose. That's who Kanye mm -hmm. was with. Like what the fuck in two thousand nine? Yeah, Christ. And then and then Wiz, and they have a ten year old. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like. She and that, yeah, she done been around. We've known Amber Rose to be Amber Rose forever. Even, I think there is something, and this is brought to my attention, there is something dope about Amber Rose still being able to get a young NBA baller. These women are told what? When you get old, you washed. When you get old, oh, whatever, you're going to be old and washed. You know how many men Drea was probably with and they was like, oh, you whatever, you're going to get old or whatever? I think Amber Rose... And Drea having this run, it kind of shows how scary this shit is, fellas. Because you could get hit up by an by old lady. So we I mean, giving you could get hit up by a young, youngster. So we giving them or, credit, stripes, for still being able to... I get I'm the, just not going to try to spank them for what they've been out here doing. They not breaking no no laws. I think... We, I think you know on, how many men date women that are lead, quote unquote legal? But it's still looked at as predator because of the age gap. It is. And I will say there's a predator aspect to it. There's a predator aspect to... I do get what you're saying, though. I just think as a man, CJ, come on. At what point it is... He's a young man. You're a young dude. 
He's a young man, a young yeah. impressionable man, a young man that might say, damn, that's Amber Rose that was with Wiz, that was with Kanye, who I saw when I was young as fuck. And now I can fuck this joint, but you don't know she going after your rookie contract money. Yes, you do, CJ. You 22. He's young and impressionable. Man, I'm at 22, you're not, a young impre- you're not young and impressionable. Even India, Man, even, well, I guess you are. I mean, come on. Even India Love run was 10 years ago. And she's still she, out here. She Look, I would have liked to see CJ Stroud pop out with a Sydney Sweeney. Or Man, a, fuck no. Nah, yeah. Uh, the young. Oh, whoever is, is the hot, like the whoever hot now. The young chick. Now. Yes. For the now. For the now is what I mean. Okay, yeah. CJ Stroud walking with her to the car. We would be like, that. I'm That's trying to think of who's couple. a black, young, popping joint now. Oh, Tyler. Yeah. Let's say that joint. You know. Let's say Tyler yeah. was, you know. Yeah, he taking a water joint to the... Uh-huh. That'd have been fire. That'd have been fire. And he'd have put them both on the map tight. Yeah. You know? I would have liked... I would have Imagine liked seeing see Tyler next year at the Houston Texans games with the jerseys. That would be fire on some Taylor Swift shit. You see how Taylor and Travis kind of took that... Yes. You know? Yes. You're not doing that with Amber Rose, CJ. Yeah. You're but not doing it. She wore other niggas' jerseys already. Not all on CJ. She wore another nigga jersey, CJ. Drea was just with Tyrod Taylor 10 months ago. I guess since he ain't getting no playing time, she said, fuck this nigga. Jalen Green. That's why I say you just got to be careful of your, ch- your choice. I do think uh, it is a little... It's not a good look. It's not the best look at all. We got movie suggest? Yep. Uh, you don't got a movie suggestion of the week, right? I don't have a movie suggestion, but I can get one. You go first. Well, no, no. We can, we can, have a, we can share it. My movie suggestion of the week is going to be the Vince Staples show on oh, Netflix. Yeah. I believe it's only six episodes. I'm about 80% of the way through. Um, I had a tweet that I tweeted because I saw this tweet of the scene. And I said, man, I don't find this shit funny at all. I don't find it funny at all. We watched the first episode in Seattle. It was late. I told A Train, I said, man, I'm really not finding this joint funny. You want to call? No, 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 you good. I said, damn, I'm really not finding this joint funny, but I realized y'all was looking at it wrong. I was looking for this plot, at least something. I'm looking for it to be like, uh, I'm looking for it to be like Atlanta because it, no, it, it without a doubt reminds you a little bit. Well, maybe a lot of it of Atlanta, just the way it's shot, the feeling of it. Is it awkward? Is it like awkward, funny, like very much awkward situation? I haven't started yet. I'm you could definitely put Vince Staples and Donald Glover's character in Atlanta in the same situation, and they both want to. They both might look at each other like you know what I'm saying. They both are like Vince uh-huh. Staples reacting to the world around him. Same thing, same recipe from Atlanta. It's just a little bit different. I realized when when Vince Staples came out and said that it was this, it was our day's Seinfeld. It's our day's Martin. I'm like, he not talking about the success of those shows. He talking about the strategy. The way Martin come on, and you don't know if Martin's going to be, you don't know what Martin is doing this episode, but you know it's not really a continuation from the last episode. Yeah. Last you don't episode expect- might have been about some shit, but the next episode is going to be something completely yeah. different. One episode, Martin's trying to get a job at a bank, and then he, at the end, he's like, man, you know what? Fuck this shit. This shit didn't work. The next episode, he could be working somewhere completely different. You don't think, but well, well, what about the bank? Right, 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 right. And I think I was missing a lot of the, and some of it is, I'll, I'll admit, y'all, the comedy is definitely, it's very... Stereotypical. It could be stereotypical. It could be very, you know, you could call it coonery if you wanted to. I wouldn't be sitting here saying it's not, but I, I told myself it's a comedy. It's not to be taken serious. It's not Atlanta, y'all. It is a comedy. It's a sketch, satire comedy, and that's how it should be received. If I get up here and try to expect for it to be Snowfall, then I won't enjoy it. But when I watched it like it being Martin or like it being Fresh Prince, like it just being this episode is just this episode... I definitely enjoyed it more. My question to y'all is this, because that's where I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and lump in what that movie suggests, because I'm going to watch it this week. But my question to y'all, and this is my measuring stick for the, the shit is, if it wasn't Vince Staples and it was a random guy, we started, think about it, with Snowfall, we didn't know who Damson Idris was. This was a new, brand new motherfucker, new show. If it wasn't Vince Staples and it was a random person, would it still be brilliant? No. 
Well, oh, would brilliant. It? Well, it would because I mean, it I wouldn't mean, be able getting, to be a show without him. People are saying that it's a great show. Yeah, it's brilliant. Oh my God, it's genius. Exactly what we needed. Yeah. If it wasn't Vince, would it still be good? No. In the same way that if Martin wasn't Martin Lawrence, then Martin wouldn't be good. Keep in mind, this, Atlanta was called Atlanta. Atlanta wasn't called the Donald Glover show. Right, 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 right. This right. is the Vince Staple show. It very heavily relies on Vince. Oh, uh, okay. The same now that way makes sense. Martin and the Fresh Prince of Bel Air very heavily relied on Martin and Will. And Will. Okay. So cool. when you look at oh, it from okay. that perspective, you're like, okay, I see what, what Vince did with this. Because y'all got to keep in mind, if I was going to do a this day and age Fresh Prince, I might have to do it like how they did the show Bel Air. Which is a dramatized, serious camera. We on some scandal energy. You know what I'm saying? Nah, yeah, 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 yeah. There's no way for you to go back to that set stage. It'll look like... I know that when Vince Staples thought of doing the show, he might have thought of having something like sketch comedy like SNL. Like the, like the Carmichael show. Well, like the Carmichael show. But I think he's deeper than that. And this is a different way of us looking at that. This dude oh, was I'm like... excited for it. Yeah, this dude was like... See, instead of you hating, you should be opening your eyes more. I said, look, criticism before knowing, there's nothing wrong with that. If you're willing to come out and say, hey, you know what? I see the vision now. Like this dude was telling me, oh, you, you walked back your take on They Clone Tyrone. Because I said that I didn't like the title. I still don't like the title of the movie. I don't have to walk back the fact that I wasn't excited for a title. Or if I wasn't excited for a scene that I saw that was a preview, fuck this scene. Oh, but it ended up being good. And I said, you know what? I actually reassessed and it was good. Oh, you got to walk back the fact you ain't like this scene. No, I don't. I still don't like this scene. That's why I say I love that Vince Staple show actually did give me more than what I might have expected or something different. Or that I actually able or that I actually was able to pick up the vision of it because I think a lot of people are missing the vision of it, looking for the Atlanta storyline. Yeah. Atlanta was also like deep, deep. Atla you know? Atlanta, yeah. And that's the difference. I see a lot of people comparing Dave and Atlanta and this show because they have one thing in common, which is rapper, uh, satire, comedy. Rapper, satire, comedy. They're doing their own show. Yeah. I think they're all different shows. Atlanta has a lot more mixed messaging in it. Like, it's surface level. But then they have episodes where they go deep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like Atlanta lost a lot of its steam because I feel like they went too far off the deep end. Yeah. And they got away from, like, building on the characters, whatever. Um, but Dave is very different because Dave isn't like that. Dave isn't I'm about like to say, don't get me wrong real quick. Uh, It does, you like, follow a story. Kind of. Like, it's still a, it's still a universe. So it's not like somebody you've seen before you will never see again type shit. Right. It's just not, you know what I mean? Cool. Almost like bruh man from the set from the fifth flow. He'll be back. You know who he is. You're gonna see Stanley. You're gonna you see You might not see them every uh, Okay, yeah. cool. Dave is Dave to me is tough to beat. Because Dave actually has a storyline. So I'm interested to see how I receive that show. I'm not gonna try to look for Dave in it. Yeah. But out of all the rappers that have shows, Dave has been the one where they nail plot, they nail the cameo stuff, they nail the artistry point in building the career part yeah. of it. So, and I was talking about this. I said I felt like Atlanta became kind of like what the Vince Staples show is with the last seasons. It seemed like Atlanta went from following, uh, what was his name in the show? Who, Vern? Vern. Uh -huh. Yeah. It went from following Donald Glover's character, like he had a girl, he was trying to get a job, but then you had Paperboy and everything's on the up. Then it looked like it just became this like episodic. Nah, yeah, they start doing different shit. Well, now we the we story just up. started not mattering at all for real, and it was just about like the idea of each episode. I would have really liked to see Paperboy go from being just this dude who's sleeping on couches to like to, touring the world and, and, and all her that, not being a big artist to them. They had battles, like they were trying to do shows and shit would go left. Or they randomly ran to the Migos and shit went crazy in a trailer. I would have liked to see them get into Hollywood, like, like uh, Paperboy is Paperboy is the biggest artist, and now Vern dealing with like corporation type 
mm-hmm. issues. And now the Lakeith Stanfield character is, you know what I'm saying? I would have loved to see the show go that way, but it did. But it is, I mean, look, I can't get what I want. And I know going up, going up that way is gonna cost more money. The story is gonna be harder to write because Dave did it. We watched Dave be nobody in them first two seasons, and then Dave start popping. And then we got to see what they did with his character and the characters around him in a different level of what they were already doing. That's the okay. that's the great thing about Dave. There are some people who want to watch the seed of a show grow to be, you know mm. what I'm saying, the flower. Or, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like if you're looking at the Vince Staples show like that, at least maybe some people can. To me, I feel like I was able to digest the Vince Staples show a little bit easier when I just watched each episode for what it was. Yeah. You know? Because it is a comedy. And they're trying to be funny. Sometimes when when you watch a comedy, it's like, all right, I ain't going to find everything funny. Yeah. But 100%. I do think I was a little hard on that scene because I'm like, what's the fucking point? Right. And I'm going to tell you. Sometimes comedy is harder to digest without a storyline. That's where you'll see people not like the Vince Staples show. Because we I'm grew up on cohesive storyline comedies. Nah, yeah. National Security, Blue Streak. I could name a big ass list of movies Life, where um Money Talks. I mean, Friday. Oh, we were just watching Money Talks, bro. <laughs> Such a good movie. So good, but it's really just a comedian living his life. That's what threw me off, too. Hell no. Money Talks is about a guy. No, 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 no. I mean, like, oh, a okay. comedian just put into the life of somebody, and they get to be a comedian while living. Nah, yeah, yeah, You yeah. see, Vince Staples not really a comedian. And then also, I feel like the there's no... It relies on the other people to be funny instead of Vince. And Vince is the guy that I've always felt like was funny. Mm-hmm. But if it's just a nigga singing to Vince and Vince finding it weird, it'll take a lot for somebody might might not think that that's funny. I'm interested to watch it. That's going to be my movie suggestion as well, because that's definitely what I'll probably get into tonight. I'll probably start that joint and see how it is. And you'll finish it fast. It's not the episode's not yeah, that they long. say. The episode's only like 25 minutes. Mm-hmm. Speaking of that, AOT, I just started season four on the, uh, on the Patreon. Big shout out to everybody that... Um, has that District 9 tier and stay tuned because I got so much more that I'm going to do. Me and Terrence got stuff that we're doing together. Mm-hmm. Um, that's going to be a big uh, installment for the year. So that's going to wrap up 189. Hopefully everybody has a great week. We will see y'all next week on Tuesday. My bad. I <laughs> What the fuck, Terrence? We'll start over. <laughs> when you you said, know what? That's gonna wrap, this is going to wrap up 189. Look out for us on the Patreon this week and some YouTube drops. We got some stuff that we're going to put from the Patreon on YouTube. Oh, yeah, but we got that yeet. We still got the yeet that that we got to do. So we got a lot of of stuff coming. That's going to... Yeah, so you'll see us. We'll be there. We'll be there. But hope everybody has a great week. We'll see y'all this week, and we'll be back in this thing on Tuesday. Yes, sir. Next time. Terrell, please. Ha, 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 ha.